Well, desperate measures are called for. I'm going to put a little piece of uh, sellotape. What's that? Scotch tape for you and Americans, uh, Americans, I suppose. And I'm going to use that to stick that nut to that uh, pair of tweezers for me temporarily. So I can hold that in place and present it to that screw. Because I was having absolutely no luck at all doing it any other way. Well, that didn't work either. It came unstuck. Part of the problem is it's very hard to see what's happening down inside the body there. Well, it's on the end, but I'm not sure that it's square and screwing up. It ain't. So it's sitting on there, but it's it's skew up, it's cross-threaded. That's not going to stay. Try that screw on it and make sure it actually does screw up, I suppose. Yeah, it's pretty slack on the threads, but it does go up. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's one of the world's worst pieces of engineering, that nut. I wonder if I can align the hole from the top and then get the screw in. That might be worth a look. What do I want? Yeah, those will do. Depends whether I can see enough through that hole. Oh yeah, you can, just. Yeah, 
It worked! Alright, I have three screws in place. And I'll do them up tight. The nuts bite into the casting down below, so they, they pull up quite, tight quite easily. Which is very good. Now, this gear. Let's run some grease under that. This is synthetic grease. Drop that in position. And the collar holds it in position. And I'll run some synthetic grease around the top of that. That should just screw in. And I will tighten that the same way I got it loose with a pair of tweezers. Not the ones I've currently got in my hand either. Breaking my good tweezers. And if you wanted to know what the secret for what all these holes are around there, I've got absolutely no idea. I haven't got any idea what purpose they would serve. Just that's that down. It moves smoothly. Yeah, it's certainly not loose. Um, I think they probably could have done with a bit more clearance in that mechanism. It doesn't matter, it's, it's in there, that's the main thing. Oh, now I see what the holes are for. The holes line up with the knob. So when the knob's on there, it will drive that gear. Now that's what the holes are for. Now answers that question. I could put the knob in place, I suppose. Might help while I'm assembling things. So first off, what have we got? Now the knob has a, a spring which sits forced into that hub there. Now the, the idea of this spring basically is it means you can turn the knob in one direction. If you turn it in the other direction, the spring is expanding and it wants to lock against the hub and it stops this from rotating. So it means that in, in practice you can only rotate the knob in the direction of the arrow. It's blocked fairly effectively from turn, you turning it the wrong way. So I'm going to, this was quite sticky with dried grease, I'm going to lubricate this with some graphite grease. So I will put some graphite grease into that recess If it wasn't lubricated, inevitably what would happen is that the metal would start grinding in there and um, start causing us grief. Right, so a, you can see a bent tang there on that the end of the wire is bent over. Well, that's, that's this end, which is the lower end when, when this is all on the camera. So I've got to feed this spring in. It's a bit of a lip there that needs to go under. So I've Got to push this in one coil at a time, really. Now 
that's certainly going in. You could possibly get it to go in by twisting it too, rotating it. That's it. That's all in position. Now when that's on there, it engages with that slot. It means you can only rotate that knob in one direction. It won't rotate the other way. That's nice and smooth in its action now too, which is something that it was not before. This, this is the piece that drives the I'll show you all of these components. Now this is the piece that drives your, your film reel. And you see it's got a little metal tab there to engage with the slots in the reel. Now that just flops about because it's held in place, it's pushed into place with this spring. And when this is all assembled and the screw is on the top of the advanced knob, that spring's pushed in and it spring loads that piece there. So that's, it's all quite important that that spring is present otherwise you'll have hit and miss with your film advance. So I'll put a bit of a grease around there and I may put some in this here too, I'm using synthetic grease in here that's enough. Push that up from underneath. I'm holding that in place with my finger at the moment. It's quite a bit of spring tension there. Put the knob on. I've got to engage that, that internal that tang on the spring, that bent over piece of the spring has got to be lined up with one of the holes in the top there for me to get to that and if I run the screw down that will press that spring down yeah, it's not, not getting there whoopsie I hope that spring didn't take off, did it? No. So I've got to do this task all, all over again once I put the top cover back on, but I want it on here while I'm assembling this so as I can check the action. That's better. And this lever will lock the film advance when it's pulled into position. And it's quite positive in its action. Alright, so far so good. What's next? Okay, next we need to wriggle this piece in position. Just going to run a bit of molybdenum paste through under there, and I'm running some on that bottom surface in case it rubs on things there. This has to wriggle into here. And I know it can be done. That's that. That bush sits on top of it. Before I put this screw in, I'm running some synthetic grease through the spindle of this gear here. And that sits on the post.
pull this back far enough to get it in place. That seems to be easier said than done. I have to wriggle this piece in second. Alright, it's a secret there somewhere. I need to learn what the secret is. Well, the secret is that this is pulled right back out of the way, so it's up in the air at this end. Then this pulls far back enough that I can get my gear into place. And then I should be able to lower this into position. Like that. Magic. This piece needs to go on. I'm putting some synthetic grease in the centre of that. Now that's driven by this eccentric here, that, that lump there. As the, as the wheel revolves, that swings this piece in and out. I'll put some uh, synthetic, no, I'll put some molybdenum paste on the bottom of this where it runs on that piece like that and on top of that goes our counter and there's a return spring and another component goes on top of that. But in the meantime, there's also a lever on here. And that's all held in with a stepped screw. Let's see if we can get these components lined up. And interestingly, the step on that screw is not snug to the centre of this lever so it's got some play to it and I haven't figured out what the reason for that is there must be one the springs well we disconnected our three springs Unfortunately, I didn't mix any of the springs up because I never removed them from their various levers. So those springs go there like that. We have one more lever here. C 
sits in place there. I can put its screw in place. And its spring goes around that hook. I'm watching the action here as I roll the film sprocket at the back. And this also appears to work very smoothly. Now the spring that would reset the counter when you open the back of the camera, that's not present at the moment. I haven't put that back on. That all feels quite good. I'll put a bit of molybdenum paste around these levers running into that shutter release, I think. Just because uh, I don't want any friction in there. Ned. They're a bit sharp, the metal in those points. seems good. And that other tab that drops in there, let me just put a touch on there too. What I'm checking here is that to make sure that when the frame count, everything locks in place, that this is locked in place. Because basically this is the part that's doing the driving. And it is, it is locking in place. You couldn't draw more film through there. Because when this lock latches into position, it latches this film advance as well. So I'm sort of seeing no, no problems with that. That all appears to be good. So this spring, I've got to get this spring back in position. Its job is to reset the frame counter. that hooks into a notch on the underside of this disc. Of course I'll have to swing it round to pre-tension that, so I'm just going to run the screw in here first and see if I can pull the spring around to where I want to engage it. Which may or may not be easy. Well there's the tail of the spring. I want to see if I can engage it over here. So 
another look at that. That makes more sense. Notches appear to be running the correct direction and that, that way up. That's better. Now let's try getting that spring around where I want it to be. Like that. And when the back's closed, of course, that does what here exactly? Yeah, here's our reset lever here, of course. Why doesn't it not reset? That's better. I think I've simply had too much tension wound up on that. That appears to be good. Well, I think my next task, that's an accounting position, my next task here will be to, this lever's got bent up again, why has it got bent up? How did that happen? I must have caught it on this lever when I was flipping it over. That's a liability. Yeah, it does. It catches on it. It's probably held slightly back from there when the top cover's on. And of course, as I stated earlier, this thing here doesn't pivot right on the centre of that screw. It's got some float to it. Rather interesting. Okay. I'm quite happy with the way that's working at the moment. I think that's probably going to be alright. 
I'll clean my finder, clean the rear glass here which is on the top housing, clean the little window for the frame counter and I'll put that top cover back in place.